Okay. Hello, everyone. Hi, hi. Welcome to the third episode of CS Podding Breaks. I'm Shalini. This is Ellie again yes. here. And, and uh, today yeah. we have with us Maria. Yeah, you can <laughs> introduce. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, today we have Maria with us, and uh, she's an associate professor here, assistant professor here at uh, Reykjavik University. And Maria, do you want to give a short introduction, like what you're doing right now in the Reykjavik University? Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me uh, on this uh, little chat. Um, my, yeah, my name is Maria Oskarsdóttir. I am assistant professor at the Department of Computer Science in Reykjavik University, uh, where my like, main area of, of research focus is in, in data science. Mm -hmm. Um, so I am, for example, um, head of the, the master programs in data science. Uh, so we started those, uh, yeah, last year actually. Uh, but as I said, my my um, area is in, in data science. So I like to work with all kinds of data and and find some interesting insights in those data that can help with decision making. And I'm also particularly interested in networks and, and network science, which are kind of um, yeah, it, it falls within data science, but it's a different kind of data that you're working with in, in network science. Mm -hmm. That's that's really good. And you're also a part of the sleep revolution, uh, the project. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I am involved in that as well. So I, I um, come into that as a, a person with expertise in, in data science, because, of course, we're going to be working with uh, lots and lots and lots of data of, of all kinds. Uh, so I, I uh, am, am joining the project on, on those grounds. Fantastic. And how did you end up where you are now? How did you come into computer science? What like, got your interest as a young student? Yeah, so uh, I am actually not a computer scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I studied uh, mathematics uh, for my bachelor at the University of Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then I did uh, my master's degree also in mathematics uh, in, in Germany at the Leibniz Universität in, in Germany. Uh, but it wasn't only pure mathematics, I was also always very focused on the statistics and the probability theory. So my bachelor was uh, mathematics with statistics and then my master was also very statistics uh, heavy. Um, but it was also quite uh, theoretical, so my, my master's thesis was quite theoretical. And after that, I, I really wanted to do something applied. I really wanted to use um, what I had been using, uh, learning uh, in practice. So I uh, started my PhD program uh, at the KU Leuven in, in Belgium. Uh, at the Faculty of Economics and Business. <laughs> so I have a PhD in what they called, uh, call uh, Applied Economics, but it's basically just data science. So I was uh, usually uh, yeah, working with uh, massive data sets, trying to find insights, but always with like a, a marketing perspective. So I was doing research on, uh, for example, um, predicting customer churn, so the, the customers that are likely to leave a company trying mm -hmm. to find those in the data. Uh, and also, uh, so another application was uh, fraud detection, so finding uh, fraudsters in data sets. And then also um, working with uh, um, credit scoring, so deciding who is credit worthy, uh, who should receive a loan. And, and these are all like different applications, but what all these uh, products had in common is that I was using networks to, to reach uh, find these decisions and to build my, my uh, machine learning models. Mm -hmm. so and how about uh, your theoretical background? Uh, was it, like, did it come in handy in all of these projects? Yeah, for sure. Because uh, when you study mathematics, you really learn like the theory, you really learn like the, the ground. Your, your basics uh, um, are really, really strong in my opinion. Uh, you learn the proper way of doing things. And I think it also helps with uh, programming because it's, it's reasoning, right? It's like this uh, mathematical thinking that you need when you are programming. So mathematics help with programming. And of course, data science is really programming heavy. So that all helps um, uh, to, to, to like get the proper foundations uh, for this area. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I've also basically studied mathematics as a bachelor's, uh, but it was like in an engineering school, so applied mathematics. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I also ended up in computer science just because somehow all of the math fit in there so nicely. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and I mean, there computer science is such a a broad field. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, You yeah. really need all different kinds of of backgrounds, right? Uh, so we kind of all fit together well, I think, uh, within this community in, in computer science. Mm -hmm. I think that's the same thing we are discussing with Erna in the first podcast, that it's how multidisciplinary it is and uh, yeah. how, we can, how it is connected to different fields and um, together it integrates uh, the, the whole system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like especially like with, with mathematics, I think it's really important that we uh, teach our students uh, proper and, and good mathematics because it's so important for the programming. Uh, and, and it's not enough to only know how to program, you have to have a, a broader field. Mm -hmm. We're trying our best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I'm also trying to push, you know, the statistics. That's, That's also exactly really, really important. <laughs> With all the different data that like surround us everywhere in our day-to-day -day lives, it's really, really important to be able to um, have like numerical literacy to understand the numbers and and the figures that we are seeing everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it helps a lot with communication, I think, as well. When yeah. you know the theory, regardless of uh, like you go to a talk and somebody's talking about something, if you understand some sort of fundamentals. You can grab on better and work. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how was like your student experience uh, in all of these places? Uh, was it like nice people welcoming? Was it all nerds, all, all guys? <laughs> <laughs> Just... uh, a lot of nerds, a Good. lot of guys, mm -hmm. but always welcoming. All right. And That's and good. I mean. Um, yeah, I like even though there it was majority guys there was also you know girls as well i mean i think when i started uh, my mathematics uh, degree there was all already yeah some some body of girls let's say uh, that were studying yeah yeah but as i said uh, everyone really friendly and and um, mm -hmm. ready to help each other out um we had a very nice community uh, at the university of iceland for uh, mathematics and, and physics students um, and, and the same in, in Germany, when I did my master's degree, there was um, actually uh, quite some girls there and, and also a very welcoming community. Yeah, in general, because these are also like quite hard subjects in a way and you need to be very dedicated. It helps a lot to have a good community that's mm -hmm. welcoming. It doesn't make you feel mm -hmm. too competitive. There's, there's like solidarity and <laughs> we all Yeah, get and, then, and then like everyone is kind of a nerd in their own way. So we, we kind of like embrace the, the nerd. <laughs> I, I love that. <laughs> I love that sentence. Yes. <laughs> and uh, well, one of the questions that I really want to ask uh, that you selected, that you feel any pressure um, here as a as a professor or back then when you're in germany or belgium doing your master's or phd that i have to do great as a woman yes but also uh, your personal thinking about this one yeah that's a very good question um so i think it is really really important that uh, we have representatives of all genders and and races uh, so that everyone can feel welcome um from the from the start mm -hmm. um and i think that's our like responsibility yeah. to make sure that uh, we have that um in our department and in our community here mm -hmm. and and even if we we don't have you know enough female professors that female students still feel welcome like they shouldn't yeah we have to make sure that everyone um gets a place uh, at our department. Um, and of course, I, I try to try to do my best uh, in that regard. Um, I, I don't think it is like pressure to do so, but I think it's really important that we are aware of it and that we are making our best efforts um, to, to reach that stage. Yeah, I, I agree. Like there's not exactly pressure, but it's good to be aware of things. Yeah. 
yeah where somebody might be coming from what things they've seen there etc yeah because yeah. i think different uh, countries they have different culture they have seen different things and uh, it's very refreshing if you see uh, the the broad area and everybody is welcoming you feel inspired and and as as a professor or as even when i'm here and i talk uh, about this department and the university to my friends and it feels like yeah it's a good thing um you know like spreading the news out there uh, that, that's yeah mm -hmm. yeah for sure me as a, especially because as well like in my bachelor's it was uh, mostly guys like a vast majority uh they, there was some sort of uh, pressure that like if you're a girl, either like you get some sort of special treatment. Um, so then, like even if you do well, it's not really you. It's just that you're, you're the only girl, and everyone's helping you. Or like, yeah, you know, like there was if there was some pressure, yeah, which I don't feel here. That's very nice. Yes. Uh, yeah, for sure. And obviously, like you had to prove yourself that. I think everyone needs no. to do it <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but here you don't have to do it like just because you are a girl. It, you have to do it. Yeah, it's yes. just yeah. Like yeah. of course, I'm, like I think this department is full of very talented people, but regardless of other factors, it's just talented people. Also, I think the international factor helps a lot mm -hmm. because we have so diverse uh, diversity in our department, uh, especially among the PhD students. I think yeah, are, I think the PhD students are very diverse. <laughs> we are like all over the world. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah good that really we know nice. uh, things about other culture and uh, we are working together here. So yeah, yeah, that's a that's a nice. Yeah, it, it really opens your eyes, right? When you work with people from of different cultures and you get to know different people from all around the world. It, it really helps you see the world in a, in a broader perspective and mm -hmm. yeah how's the staff uh, version of the this like the phd students were all very kind of like basically like the only representative <laughs> from our culture uh is the how's the staff is it does it feel like a very diverse is it more yeah yeah i mean i i think it is diverse and and this getting diverser or more diverse um we have you know people from from different uh backgrounds uh from different cultures um well it's it's mostly of course uh icelandic and and european but we have some uh, representatives from from other cultures as well um and that is is growing but what i what i think is um very obvious is that i mean it is a very open environment and everyone gets to have their opinion and and say their mind and and still feel part of of the of the community mm -hmm. yeah i feel also like there's the obvious discriminative difference there that PhD students come for x years three four and uh it's your phd and then you have the option to go somewhere else mm -hmm. Uh, and particularly because it's a, like a PhD for three years, you're thinking, mm -hmm, Iceland, <laughs> like the full experience. Uh, yeah. But but then if it's like a full professor sort of type of work where you have to go somewhere or settle down or bring your family, yeah, maybe it's like a more easy decision to, if you're from Europe, to make that decision, or if you're from Iceland. Yeah, 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 definitely, uh, and. And that's what we see also is that like the the Icelandic faculty they've they've gone abroad to study and then they kind of come back yeah yeah with with but, the experience with them yeah but but still even with that factor being accounted for still we have a quite broad uh, at least in comparison to other cases I think we have a broad spectrum of nationalities and background yeah, yeah. I, I think so yeah in but uh, like where I'm from we had one foreign professor yeah um one in a really big university <laughs> uh but i guess that's also related to the, they had to learn the local language in order to mm -hmm. teach yeah and that's a that's not an yeah. Yeah, it helps a, a lot right it helps yeah. a lot yes yeah and, and 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 it's one thing to 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 like learn the language to go about your day-to-day -day life and another thing to learn it to teach teach computer yeah. science or or mathematics i think that's a whole different um story
Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Then to get to get into someone's head, and mm. this is the word you, you need to hear you to make to understand that. what this idea is. Yeah. yeah. And like, do you have any like good experience about teaching here uh, that you want to share with us? Or good experience, from, or from or, your or from being abroad? Yes, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, because we are uh, like a small uh, and rather young university, I think we have a lot of um, freedom and, and flexibility uh, in like designing our own courses. Uh, I was teaching, uh, so, so last year for the first time I taught this course on, on network science. Mm -hmm. um, with a small group of students and, and it was really, really uh, enjoyable because like you, like it's a small group and you, you really get to know the students and really get to get to inspire them. Um, and I could really see how they like really enjoyed the topic and, and uh, learned a lot. So I was teaching this course again uh, this semester and I really had the same experience. Like they, I could see it in their eyes almost how much they um, enjoyed the topic. And that's what I, that's what I really, really like to see um, as a teacher, of course. Um, yeah, I, I very much understand that's like one of the best feelings ever. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. And do you see, um, like, you've been to Germany, uh, you've been to Belgium, and of course now you're in Iceland. Uh, do you have uh, experienced some kind of difference there that, uh, like, structure-wise, uh, university, organizational stuff? Do you see there's lots of difference between these places? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> in in um, yeah, like universities that are like these have these like rigid structures. Um, I think like the the national culture really shows. Mm -hmm. uh, so the university in in Germany was way different from the university in in uh, Belgium. And then, like University in Ice, of Iceland, uh, is, was way different from those two. Uh, and yet, like Reykjavik University is similar to the University of Iceland. So I think it's like this: this cultural differences that that uh, come through. And also, what we are lucky to have here is, as I mentioned, this this young um, university that has a very flat structure. Mm -hmm. So. If you want to ask for something, uh, you just go ask the person uh, that can give it to you. Uh, and we don't have these um, strict protocols, which which you had in in both Germany and and in Belgium. So in in Belgium, for example, if you wanted to go on a conference, you had to ask permission, um, and and like the dean had to uh, allow you to go to the conference. <laughs> But that's not here. Uh, and then in, for example, in, in Germany, they had this very uh, strict rules about um, like signing up for exams. You had to do it by a certain date in a special office and otherwise you weren't allowed to take the exam and, and so on. And, and I feel like here, um, if you missed the deadline, that's okay. We, we will just figure yeah. out. Yeah. 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 We're not going to banish you from the exam just because you, you know, yeah. missed the deadline. And uh, do you think that it would be feasible if we grew as a university? Or, yeah, if we grew as a university, I would say, like, uh, would it still be feasible to keep this relaxed thing? Or is it just because we are in such a scale that you can actually go for a case by case analysis? Mm -hmm. Um, that's a very good question. I mean, I think there's definitely a, a balance and um, and there's that yeah, balance between being like strict enough and, and too strict. Uh, and and at the moment we are kind of on the side of, of maybe not being strict enough and, and maybe we have to, um, in, in some cases we might maybe have to come up with some processes and, and, and things to make it more structured. Uh, but I, I hope that it will only be done for the like the necessary things and we can still keep our, our freedom that we, that I, we have. I, I think it's, it, it's a really, really great advantage of, of this university. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We have, I think we're all enjoying yes. mm -hmm. popping by somewhere. Oh, okay, <laughs> then this can be done easily, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. 
that's yeah that's i totally agree and that's very nice that we have this here mm. and all of these differences did they consciously make you uh, to take the decision to come back to iceland <laughs> yeah i mean i was i was abroad for nine years mm. um, so first i was in, in germany for four and then i was in belgium for five uh, but when I left Iceland, I left with the intention of coming back. Okay, okay. Oh, right. I, I didn't know how, how long I would stay, but I, I always wanted to come back. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, yeah, I mean, so it, it, it could have happened that I would have gone to a different place before I came back to Iceland, but and then I, then I got this opportunity here, so I came back right away. But I was always determined to, to mm -hmm. come back. I yeah. see. That's, it's good to have you back. Yes, you are very happy. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. So I think we're reaching a nice point where we can conclude this interview. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And thank you to our viewers for watching yes. the podcast. Stay and tuned for the next episode. Yes. And watch this. Yeah. <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for joining. Bye. Bye.